Hi there, this is Mr. Mark with your third summer assignment video on substitution and evaluation, or as we commonly refer in the business as plug and chug. Basically what this means is to take an equation and either given values or measured values to solve for a desired value. Now this is something that is really not that complicated. Um, it's something you've been learning in math for a long, long time, but it's still stuff that we mess up. And we mess it up for a few reasons. Number one is because we don't write down enough stuff. We get lazy or in a hurry. We go too fast. We don't follow the rules. PEMDAS, those are your rules. And we treat calculators sometimes like they are magic, which they are definitely not. The other reason why this video is kind of important is because you probably never had to use units while evaluating numbers. Uh, it's a disservice that happens in math classes sometimes, and so it's something that we need to deal with. In physics, we're dealing with real life, which means we're dealing with measurements, which have units. So the rules are your order of operations. And we should sort of kind of have this in our brains. Start working inside out from the parentheses. Now, parentheses includes any and all grouping symbols. Parentheses, brackets, fraction bars, and square root signs are all example, examples of grouping symbols. You do those first from the inside out. Second, evaluate your exponents. A square root bracket is an exponent as well. Then multiply and divide. Remember, you can work in any order. And then add and subtract. Again, working in any order. If you have multiple parentheses, you may go through these steps a few times before you get to the end. Now, the thing that you may not be accustomed to is using units. All real numbers, and by real I mean actual real life numbers, um, have units except for numbers that are counting numbers and some constants. Um, units are very, very important and they are part of the number. Don't neglect them. Any operation that you do on a number must also be done on the unit for that number. For instance, if an equation tells you to square the number, then you need to square the unit that goes with that number as well. So, an example of why units are important. Is the number 100 big or small? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about walking on broken glass for 100 miles, that would probably be a big number. If I'm telling you that you have 100 pennies with which to buy groceries with for a month, then that would be like a ridiculously small number. And so units give us some sort of sense of scale to numbers. They give us important meaning to the numbers, and they provide context for numbers. If you're telling somebody how far to go, you would probably automatically include things like feet or miles with it. The same needs to be true of all numbers that we work with this year in physics. So let's look at a simple example. Suppose we have a very common physics equation, A equals V minus V initial, that's subscript 0, well 0 is um, an initial value over T. And we've got these measurements for these quantities, 12 meters per second, 20 meters per second, and 4 seconds. So when we substitute Write out your substitution first. Don't skip this step, because if you make a mistake later, um, just knowing what number goes where is important if you want to get a little bit of partial credit for things that you do, like on tests and stuff. It also helps you find where your mistakes are. You show all the important substitution. Evaluate the top part first. Remember that the fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So 12 meters per second minus 20 meters per second will be negative 8 meters per second. And then I think I wrote down the wrong thing over here. That was supposed to be a 4. And so we get something like negative 2 when we do the division. And then we also need to divide the units. That would be meter per second per second. And since a per second 
is on bottom twice, then we can say that that is still not negative 4, it's still negative 2. Negative 2 meters per second squared. That's a unit for acceleration that's going to be very common for us this year. Sorry about my mess up there. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have this equation where y is equal to y subscript 0, again that means initial, plus v subscript 0 t plus 1 half a t squared. We have these values, these measurements, to substitute in to find what y is. So write out all the substitution first. Again, don't skip this step. There's no parentheses to really worry about, so my first step would be to take care of the exponent over on the right side. And while I'm at it, I could go ahead and multiply what's in the middle there first. Um, so a meter per second times a second, the seconds will cancel out. And then go ahead and take care of that squared. Remember to square the unit. And so 8 seconds squared would be 64 seconds squared, like that. Then I've got some multiplying to take care of. Remember to multiply the units. So meter per second squared times a second squared is just a meter. And then once I've got all the multiplication and exponents in each term taken care of, then I can go ahead and do all the addition. Remember that if numbers don't have the same unit, then you can't add them together. So those had to all worked out to have been meters in each term. And remember that each thing separated by a plus sign is a term. So there's three terms in that equation. So if all three terms don't have the same unit at the end, then something went wrong. You can't add them if they don't have the same unit. Let's look at another example. This one's a little bit longer. I've got a equals t minus mu, that's the letter mu, m1g plus kx all over m1 plus 2m2 in parentheses times 4. We'll start out just by writing out the substitution, including the units. Uh, I don't have any exponents here, so let's take care of the multiply part. So I'm going to multiply everything in the second term on top and the third term on top. Should look like that. A kilogram times meter per second squared is a kilogram meter per second squared. Kilogram per second squared times a meter gives you the same thing. And then go ahead and add up the 400 plus 100 kilograms in parentheses like that. Now remember that the fraction bar is still a grouping symbol. So you can kind of think like the top is enclosed in parentheses. So evaluate that addition first. Multiply on bottom. And then when you do the arithmetic, negative 275 over 1,000 is like 0.275. And then kilograms cancel out. And so our unit looks like that. So if you take your time and actually write out all these things as you do them and don't try to do everything in one step, then it's going to work out a lot better for you. Your calculator is not some sort of magic tool. If you just type it into your calculator exactly like it looks, the calculator is going to make mistakes. Is it possible to do it all in one step with the calculator? Yes, but you're very, very likely to mess something up. Calculator is only as smart as you are. Okay, um, if you have measurements which are in different units, then convert them to the same unit before you do your substitution. If not, then you're going to get yourself really confused. So here's a common example. Suppose we have this equation, which is the definition of velocity, and we have two positions represented by x's, x and x subscript 0. Now if two people measure these positions independently of each other, they might measure them in different units. And so I've got x is 100 centimeters and x subscript 0 is 5 meters. If I do something like that, well, you can't add or subtract things that aren't in the same unit. 
100 centimeters minus 5 meters is meaningless. You can't do that. And so rather than do that, replace the 100 centimeters with 1 meter. There's 100 centimeter and 1 meter. Now they've got the same unit, and you can actually subtract them and go on about the rest of the problem. So if you did not do that, you would end up with something way, way off, like negative 95 over 10, which can't be the right answer. Look at another example. Suppose we had something like this, where one person measured M1 to be 5 kilograms, and a second person measured M2 to be 10 grams. If we do something like this, then we would get something like 0.5 kilograms per gram, which is weird, scary, frightening, and confusing, and it's just not something that's going to be very useful to us. So we don't want to do that. So instead of doing that, take those 10 grams and make it into 0 0.01 kilogram. There's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. By the way, those are some conversions you should remember from chemistry. So now the kilograms cancel out, which gives me the correct unit. So you can see there's a big difference in the numerical value that we get when we do the units correctly versus when we do them incorrectly. And so there's not a whole lot that we need to know about units of measurement, and we'll obviously learn things as we go throughout the year. But for right now, I want you to remember those basic unit conversions you learned in chemistry, centi and kilo being the two most important, and that if you have different units, make them the same units before you actually substitute them into your um, equation. So you should now do the substitution part of your summer assignment. The answers are again posted on my Mr. Mark's website so that you can check your answers as you're working. Don't neglect the units. Go ahead and get in that habit of including units in every step of your work right now because it's going to be an expectation throughout the year. That's the end of this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.